Hi, welcome to Baking with J plus Dan. I'm Jay. I'm Dan, and today we're making the rose pan bundt cake. This is the rose pan. Look at that, how cute. You've probably seen it in the cathedral cakes and the flower cakes. The, uh, the pan really does the bulk of the work in this one. Our flavors today are strawberry and lemon. So you can use whatever bundt pan you have. We just happen to have the rose one, but you can use this traditional bun, angel food cake, whatever you have. This is a very versatile recipe. In your mixer, you wanna have two sticks of butter. Make sure it's unsalted butter at room temperature, along with two cups of sugar. Mix that three to five minutes until it's nice and fluffy. I'm gonna give it a quick scrape. Next ingredient, you wanna have four large eggs. Also make sure they're at room temperature and add them one at a time. Our eggs are nicely beaten to the sugar and butter mixture. Now it's time to add our flavoring. We have two teaspoons of freshly grated lemon zest. Gives it a really good punch. Along with two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And you wanna mix that up again for another two to three minutes. So our flavoring has been mixing into the egg, sugar, and butter mixture. Give it a quick scrape, and now it's time for the dry ingredients. We have three cups of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna whisk that together with one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and a three quarter teaspoon of salt. Just make sure it's all blended together. So we'll add our dry ingredients into the batter with uh, one cup of buttermilk. Yeah. Make sure your buttermilk is at room temperature or you wanna alternate it between the flour and the buttermilk, flour being the last addition. So we start and end with the flour. This happens to be that whole fat buttermilk that's so hard to find. So <laughs> look for the full fat version. I think it gives it a nicer texture. Batter is just coming together. I'm just finished mixing it by hand. You don't want to over mix it too much. And you can see the texture of it. What you want to do now is reserve one and a half cups of that batter so we can do our strawberry swirl. So just in a separate bowl, just scoop out a couple of scoops. About three scoops should do it. And that to you. And then with the reserved batter, you want to have one third cup of your favorite strawberry jam along with one third cups of dried strawberries and a little splash of lemon juice. And just pour that in there. So the dried strawberries, you want to chop them up a little bit so they don't just plunge through and it gives you more of a balance in each slice of cake. Now to that batter, I like to add just a little dab of food coloring. You don't want to put too much because you want it to be a little bit festive, but not overly red. So just a drop or two. But again, you can use this with whatever fruit you like. Maybe you can do raisins if you have, or cranberries. Dried cranberries will be good. That'd be great. Dried apricots would be amazing. So in our pan, this is the other tidbit about the pan. Use a silicone brush and some melted butter and go in before you put the flour, butter through all of those crevices. You wanna make sure it's completely covered with the butter, not to the point that it's saturated. Save that for your buttered popcorn. <laughs> and then flour, nice light coating of flour. Make sure you knock out all the crevices so it's completely coated and that's going to help you unmold the cake in the end. So it's time to assemble the cake. We'll start with our white batter. Drop that in first. Just making a small ring around the bottom. And then on top of that ring you want to have your strawberry mixture 
and just do like a medium sized scoop in it. Find three scoops is just the right amount. And just take a knife or a spatula, whatever you have. You can even use a toothpick. And just gently swirl the two mixtures together. Try to get a little bit of the air pockets out of the cake. And then it's time for the next layer. We'll do the same thing again. So this is the second layer. Again, I'm just gonna swirl it together so we have a nice, lovely pattern, as well as taking out all those air bubbles. And you'll have just enough batter at the end to cover, try to cover all of the pink batter. I always feel like that gives a little surprise inside, but they'll know by the petals too, <laughs> right? <laughs> So now we're just going to smooth out the top layer of our cake. And this goes into preheated oven at 350 degrees, bakes for 45 minutes or until your cake tester comes out clean. Once the cake is finished baking, let it sit in the pan for 15 minutes and then you turn it out onto a cooling rack until it's completely cold. And then it's time for that yummy glaze. And here it is in its natural state. Look at how some of the petals have turned red. Others are still that neutral white batter. You could serve it just like this. I think it's delicious. You could do a little powdered sugar on top or make this fabulous glaze. Yes, yeah, so I like to start my glaze with one one pound box of powdered sugar along with three to four tablespoons of your favorite juice. I happen to use pomegranate because of the color and the tang. And to that, you wanna add two tablespoons of softened butter, um, the zest of one lemon, and one tablespoon of that lemon juice. Mix it all up until it's a nice consistency like this. You want it to be thick so that it clings to all the little crevices of that beautiful rose bunt pan, but you don't want it to be too thick where it just you know doesn't glide over easily. So once that's all mixed up, you just start to pour it over your cake. So that is how you finish this beautiful cake. And you can just take a spoon and just scoop up some of the extra frosting that's on the tray and just kind of even it out. Now you want to let that set for about two to three minutes so that we can come back and add our little pomegranates. So after the glaze has a moment to set up, we're going to go in with fresh pomegranate seeds. And this just gives it that fabulous pop on top you get a little you get a little burst of pomegranate then you have the chew of the strawberries inside and mm -hmm. the zest it makes it look like a party <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to let this set up for another 10 minutes and then we're ready to cut it and serve so look at this it's so majestic <laughs> Very dramatic cake. So we take a serrated knife. Let's see how this cuts. Oh, just smooth. So easy. 
I think this this cake would serve two people easily. <laughs> Oh, look at these layers. Yeah, you can see that swirl where we did that strawberry filling and the pomegranates on the outside. Um, mm. I'm going to take a taste. Wow, so each slice, it's personalized. The lemon tanginess mm. and the pomegranate mixed with the strawberry. It's really, really good. It's beautiful. Also, this is fabulous. You have to give it a try. Thanks for watching Baking with Jay Plus Dan. Please remember to subscribe, share, like, and don't forget, ring the bell.